Hey guys, welcome to the Hidden Panda Show. Panda here. Uh, I want to talk about the Waypoint update. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different than um, videos that I would do in the past. It's going to be more of like a podcast style, obviously not as long. So it's going to be really free form. I don't have like a script that I'm going to be reading or anything like that. Uh, I just want this to kind of be off the cuff and my genuine opinions on the Waypoint update and kind of what I think, right? Um, now that we've all had a chance to kind of let it breathe and, and digest uh, what has taken place. We're just going to go ahead and get started with that. Uh, Waypoint. Been really divisive for people, right? A lot of people are kind of on the fence, you know? Uh, there's longtime players that have said that this broke the game for me. It's driven them away from No Man's Sky. There's players that uh, have always played No Man's Sky even since launch who've been waiting on that thing to bring them back. And so this update's really kind of brought them back, right? Uh, I could name a few examples off the top of my head, like Slade Braddock and John Hall, for example. Uh, they haven't played the game in quite some time, and they're back playing again um, and enjoying this new Waypoint update. And so it's kind of a mixed bag, right, guys? Like, some people are being driven away, some people are being driven too, and, like always, with every No Man's Sky update, it's always bringing in new players to the community and so hello games they're in a difficult position right not only do they kind of have to appease legacy and long-term players and try to make the game accessible and invite new players right that's what's justified all these new updates and console releases over the years is that hello games has done a really good job at continuing to attract new players into the universe of no man's sky which is good for everybody right but at the same time, I do know that some people um, are afraid that maybe they're forgotten, right? That uh, they've been playing the game since day one and it's changed in a way that's alienated or isolated them from um, what they've always enjoyed about the game. And so I kind of get both sides of that. Now for me, it's a little bit different, uh, just like it is with every player of No Man's Sky. I pre-ordered the game. I downloaded it at midnight in, in 2016 and I've been playing it fairly regularly since. I mean, just like everybody, I take my little breaks here and there, and I don't play it as much as some players. I know that there's players that have thousands and thousands of hours in the game. I have just barely over a thousand hours in the No Man's Sky. To me, that's a lot, especially considering that I don't often get to play every day. Um, I think putting a thousand hours into any game is, is pretty solid for me. But I would consider myself a legacy player, a day one player, a longtime fan of No Man's Sky. And there's been times uh, throughout my evolution with No Man's Sky where I've been very critical and very unkind to the No Man's Sky community and to the developer Hello Games and to Sean Murray and to the game No Man's Sky, right? it's it's uh, For me, it's been a mixed bag. I, I feel like me more than many... Um, that I've been really honest with myself and with my community and, and my subscribers um, about my thoughts and opinions regarding No Man's Sky. And sometimes they're not always positive. Uh, and, and, and a lot of times they are positive. And it just kind of depends on what's going on. Now, for me, the really big focus for the Waypoint update in terms of what enhances my experience playing the game is the release on Nintendo Switch. And I'll probably make a whole separate video about that at some point, because it's really its own thing. It's just, it's down resed, right? It's 30 frames a second, lower resolution version of No Man's Sky. And with the exception of multiplayer, it's essentially the full game. So it's not like they shorted anybody really. And multiplayer, it does say like, you know, when you went to go pre-order the game, basically on every single website you could pre-order the Switch version from, it said on there, even on the Nintendo Switch store, that um, they're uh, basically considering uh, adding multiplayer and, and, and different things, uh, cross-save capability um, in the future, that these are possibilities that they're really trying to work the kinks out on. right? But for the most part, it's the full experience that we've always had with No Man's Sky. Um, and it looks and performs way better than it really realistically has any right to. Now, with regard to the Waypoint update at large as it stands, here it is. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of the Waypoint update. Now, I'm also a big fan of speculation, and everything that I speculated might be in this update, 0% of it happened, and I'm okay with that because my speculation doesn't become expectation. 
but I'm a big fan of this update, and I know that a lot of people aren't. And it because it's because it really broke the game for them. It broke their progression, especially the min maxers. But for me, it's been excellent. So let's just take a look at it. I love the new inventory system. I love that we don't have tabs anymore. Thank God, right? Say goodbye to the tabs. I like that we're scrolling. I know some people aren't fans of that, but I actually enjoy the scrolling. It's a huge thing for me. Um, I would often forget in my expanded cargo inventory what I would have in there sometimes, and I would forget to tab over. And I had a lot of just duplications of things. But now I can essentially, right, filter my inventory. So now I've got this one cargo with all these slots, all these icons. I have all these resources. They're all stored there. And I could break them down, right? So I can literally just filter out what I'm looking for. Everything from like raw material to high value items so that I could see, okay, what trade commodities do I have that I don't need that I can sell um, if I need units or if I want to buy a particular freight or I'm a little short or whatever the case is, or maybe it's just taking up space that I don't need it to. Or maybe I just want to filter some things out, take an opportunity to kind of reorganize, right? So it allows me to kind of filter those things out by segments. But I've got this one streamlined menu. I can switch over to consumables. I've got my ammo, right? I can just filter out consumables. I can go to my ammo and I can just craft more ammo, craft more plasma grenades, craft more whatever it is that I'm wanting, right? And then I can break that down and I can filter out installable technology. I love this. This is so much more streamlined. So uh, the quality of life on this is so much better than it's ever been. So that, you know, let's say I want to install this personal refiner. Well, I can't. At the moment, I don't have enough technology slots. Now, the shitty thing is, is that I had many and now I have a lot less. But in this example, I don't have enough. I don't need this trade rocket right now though, but maybe I want to refine something to get some nanites. So I can break that tech down and store it. I can archive my technology. I could then take that portable refiner and I can move that into my technology slots. And then now I can take that pugnium, okay? And I can reduce it to whatever I want. I can place that inside my portable refiner. I can add my fuel source to my portable refiner, okay? Throw a little bit of condensed carbon in there, bada bing, and I can begin now I'm uh, refining Pugnium into Nanites, okay? Now, you've always been able to do all of these things. It's just always been more clunky, right? What if all your Pugnium was inside of your expanded cargo? Well, then you'd have to open up your, your inventory. You'd have to tab over twice until you got to cargo. Then you'd have to move it around. And because you had this external cargo, you couldn't always transfer stuff from cargo. Let's say you're playing multiplayer. You couldn't transfer stuff from your external cargo or your extra cargo into like another player's inventory. But you completely eliminate that problem by having it all in one streamlined, concise screen that scrolls okay now a lot of people they have a, a hard time adjusting to change okay and so to them this is a bad thing maybe this change it, it uh, prevents them from enjoying this update as much as maybe other people because now it's something that they've got to relearn that they had a, a you know they had nailed down right they, they basically had it all figured out and now it's different and that can be really frustrating and look guys i get that right like i'm i get that i sympathize with the people that um feel like this update really kind of put them out of place okay um but for me it just makes life a lot easier right i want to explore I want to be an outlaw. I want to run pirate missions. There's so much more I want to do in No Man's Sky that doesn't involve messing around with squares in my inventory and tabbing over all the time to do stuff, right? So I can very quickly pull up one screen, filter out the things I'm looking for, get things knocked out very quickly, and your storage isn't really a problem because, yeah, you can have your technology arranged in a particular way, but here's what you can do if you just want to switch it up or just do something different. You can break that technology down, archive it, move it into your inventory, put something else in its place for the time being, and then move it back if you ever decide to, right? It doesn't take away from something that you've been doing. It just makes it a little bit different. Now, you can't double stack, 
So I know that, you know, that's a big problem for people because people like the ability to double stack. But we've really got to sit down and think about, you know, what's an exploit versus a feature? Does anybody really believe that, like, after the next update, that that they wanted you to have the ability to, like, double stack uh, modifications in your inventory like that? I mean, maybe some of you believe that, but I mean, I don't really think so. I remember when the next update hit and the game launched on Xbox, my brother got it. And he had enough inventory slots that there they, they were no limitations really on stacking upgrades. So he was exploiting the S-Class technology for movement. And he would basically buy an S-Class module and he'd reload his save and buy another one and another one and another one from a particular space station. And before you know it, the guy was able to jetpack out of a planet's atmosphere basically, right? I, I'm pretty sure that that wasn't an intended function. So what did Hello Games do? Hello Games added the ability of your technology to get overloaded, right? They tried to nerf that technology. Now, did some people get upset at that time that you weren't able to just unlimitedly stack S-Class technologies on a particular uh, piece of equipment that you had? I'm sure, right? I'm sure they did. And when they took that away, it probably upset a few people. But I also believe that people figured out later down the road that in your technology inventory, yeah, you could break your technology by overloading it if you put more than three uh, of a particular type of of upgrade on there. Like, let's say you put three S-Class technologies for your jetpack, and it, oh, you know, you tried to put a fourth one, and it overloaded it. Well, I can see that being a big problem, right? Um, if you're wanting to sit there and like be able to jetpack into outer space. So somebody figured out, oh, if I just put three in my technology, but put three in my regular cargo, then now I've got six of this particular upgrade. Um, and now I've got this crazy, you know, buff. Um, I just, I don't believe in my heart of hearts that like Hello Game, that they intended it to be that way, okay? And so now they've nerfed that. They've balanced the game. They were making changes to how inventory functions and operates in No Man's Sky. And one of the things that they got rid of uh, was, in my opinion, this exploit that allows you to, to, to stack up this technology that should overload, right? The reason why it overloads in the first place is because they don't want people to break the game and make a particular game mode incredibly easy when it wasn't designed to be that way. So I think that this update fixes a lot of things. I know that it upsets a few people, but if you just give it a chance, you just take a moment to digest and comprehend what's taken place and be open to learning this new way of doing it, I think that you'll really enjoy it. But guys, that's kind of my opinion on what's uh, taken place with this update. Um, I believe Waypoint to be a very good update. I'm really excited about it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know.